There's a number that holds some of the deepest secrets in the universe. It's responsible for how chemical reactions happen, how stars burn, and is so key to our existence that if it were off by just a few percentage points, you, me, all of this might not even be here. And somehow, it comes out to 1 over 137. It's a number that's baffled scientists for nearly a century. And according to physicist Richard Feynman, is one of the biggest damn mysteries in physics. The average healthy human being will drink up to three gallons of water a day. All of the planet's most ancient mythos, theos, and cosmologies record creation events that begin with water. All laws, since primordial antiquity, were written to regulate land and sea separately. Laws pertaining to land became the law of the land, or rather natural or common law, and laws pertaining to the sea became law of the sea, or rather maritime admiralty law, which is international law and the same everywhere in the world, no matter where you go. All laws since time immemorial originally from and are based upon ecclesiastical or canon law via the ancient laws and ecclesiastical right of kings. Natural or common law primarily preserves the inalienable rights and needs of human beings who live on land, differing between nations. The law of the sea, or maritime admiralty law, primarily grants the right that is legal to conduct merchant, banking, corporate, international commerce. Seeing how living persons cannot live on or in water for extended periods of time, and the earth seas that have been used primarily for travel since antiquity, regulation of the sea for merchant, trafficking, shipping, and commerce through law became necessary for the merchants of nations to do business internationally. The law of the sea, maritime admiralty law, is universal and transcends all national boundaries and laws legally. What is legal is not necessarily lawful. Natural or common law, the law of the land preserving the rights and freedoms of living persons, is lawful. Maritime admiralty law, or UCC, Universal Commercial Code, is legal, and that legal robbery and murder. In ancient Rome, a Roman maxim law stated that he who will be deceived, let him be deceived, which means the responsibility of the deception is on the one that is deceived by it. Basically, if you get it up the hoop, or what we commonly refer to as being stiffed, shafted, that's your problem. Unbeknownst to everyone, maritime admiralty law, the international law of the high seas, came upon land like a flood and made every man, woman, and child since that time dead in the water. The word maritime comes from the proto-italic cognates mer, mar, mare, and mari, which all mean water. These cognates are found in words like commerce, and merchant, and maritime. The water that flows by currents in rivers is directed by the river banks. Water that flows in the world of maritime admiralty law is money, because money is water. Money is current sea. It's liquid, as in liquid acids. Money or monai, mono eye, or simply one eye in maritime admiralty banking laws is the lifeblood, the cash 
flow of the system of merchandising and traffic. To traverse this fictional world, there must be ships. Ships traverse water or the sea, and when they come to land, they come into a port. When you plug your electronic device into a computer, you're plugging it into a USB port, a universal serial bus port. The world of the internet is analogized with water as well. We have the deep web, and when you do live social media broadcast on the internet, you are streaming the show. When a ship pulls into the port, it comes down a canal to where there is a dock, and there the ship is tied off. The ship's captain submits to the dockmaster a manifest of birth, a license and manifest of goods and services being delivered by the ship to the dock. The dockmaster signs the manifest claiming the cargo as property now of the ward, which includes livestock. All ships are female. A woman is a ship. A man is a fabricator. A man delivers semen into a vessel. The woman bears the cargo of the semen. And labors for nine months, wherein her water breaks, and the semen in the hold come down the birth canal through a port of entry, and are delivered in a hospital delivery room. According to Black's Law Dictionary, a hospital is also a bank and also a church. The woman has shipped newly birthed Admiralty maritime product, stock, livestock, cargo. A doctor will untie the ship from the cargo stock, the product, by cutting the umbilical cord to the ship or vessel, and sign a birth certificate, a manifest of. Birth, after the cargo has been stamped or daubed by a footprint and fingerprint with blood and ink, and after the informants, which are your parents, sign the manifest, which is plainly written on the certificate itself, your parents, the informants, are informing the doctor that the cargo, the stock, is now delivered and can be claimed by signature. The doctor signs the certificate, making you now lost at sea, as unclaimed corporate property, cargo, stock, product, commodity. You are now legally dead in the water, and your name appears in all capital letters and on every other legal document. Could it actually be true you are dead and cut off from your creator? Let's watch a short excerpt from Mark Christopher's video, Tricks and Traps of the Court PT, 1A, length 318. Under international maritime law, all of you are dead. You are dead. You've been dead for a very long time. More serious than you can possibly imagine. And no dead person will ever see life, will ever hear life, will never speak of life. You will never make contract with each other and you shall make no contract or a covenant with your God. And that's the world that you live, live in. How that is done is with the use of language and I'm going to cover that in more detail. As we speak, we're just going through life babbling with each other. That language is known as babble. Since we speak a language of Babel, what's interpreting the things that we're saying is our subconscious ability to make those interpretations. And this is how they get you switched off or stand down, and that's what you essentially are. You're walking around where your subconscious is stood down. 
you don't have access to it. You don't have access to it because the words that you are using locks you out of your subconscious mind. And as I go through what maritime law is, what federal law is, you'll start to see a glimpse of how this is done, the language that you use. And I'll bring all those subjects in together and I'll do my best to explain it, how they're using that to enforce that you shall not make no contract with your God or covenant. You shall make no contracts with you each yourself. You cannot hear or see life. One of the things that they have to do is that they always tell you the truth. And I say the word always, whenever they don't, they get caught out. There's a reason why that is. Your subconscious mind works at 120 times faster than your conscious mind does. 120 times faster. I am unable to go into the world of the unconscious because it is unconscious. So I will stick with the subconscious. Since it works 120 times faster than your conscious mind, it knows when you're lying, it knows when you're telling the truth, and it knows what the facts are, and it's already performed those calculations 120 times way before the conscious mind gets to it. And you might feel it as a sense of intuition or a dream, and then you act on it, or your conscious mind acts on it 120 years later when it's all over. And that's known as a migration period. That's how long sometimes it can take if one does not listen to their instincts for that information that the subconscious mind gave you, either in the solar plexus or any other part of the world, to alert you to that something is not quite right. That's how long it can might take to migrate to the conscious mind. Do you feel you are missing a part of you? If you were to look within yourself, by knowing they self, would you find what you are missing, lacking and what has been taken from you? Would that missing part of you, try to communicate to you, that you are, dead in the water? If you did actually lose your spiritual connection to the divine, and that divine part of you were lost at sea or say, dead in the water, what message of truth would it have for you? If, for ye are dead, and your life is hid with Christ in God. Colossians chapter 3 verse 3, what would the message to you be to let you know? If the occult really has separated your connection to the Creator, they must tell you the truth about it. Entertainment media is the mechanism they would use to convey the truth. But in order for you to see something they convey as truth, you must know this is what they do. Now you know, so try and pay attention from now on and look for clues. If you are dead in the water, disconnected from God, you will see the clues from the media industry. See if you see, what I see, coming from the sea, that is dead in the water. Or in this case, he that hath ears to hear, let him hear. Running away from what we have Now you're running back
your every breath Life is for the living in the water oh. You feel that you should run but Where are you to hide in the water oh. Against the tide struggle skin wearing skin wearing against the time we struggle to keep our heads above the deep and our hearts above the line above the line we vow your life and blood this is not our home Water. Oh, yeah, I hope he is never found. Just try and keep your way in the water. Oh, and against the tide, we struggle. The skin wearing, skin wearing. Against the tide. We struggle to keep our heads above the deep and our hearts above the light, above the light. And who we are today can never make amends for what we've done. Tainted blood. His eyes, his eyes are full of love. Forgive them, release them. Above the line, above the line. 